Hi, I'm Rachel, also known as Party Time Excellent. And uh, I do things with 8-bit Nintendos. And I would talk a little bit about uh, the game that I'm debuting here today, as well as some of the other stuff we've got set up on Nintendos. Um, so I thought I'd just take a few minutes to describe sort of what I've been doing for the past two years. Um, I've been involved with a community known as Chiptune. And for those of you that haven't heard it or um, been to a show, Chiptune is a genre of music that's made with old video game consoles or old computers. And uh, some of it sounds very much like your old school video game, and some of it sounds very radically different and interesting. But people are doing amazing things using Nintendos and Sega Genesis and Nintendo, you know, all sorts of old consoles as essentially instruments or, or uh, accompaniments to music. Um, the great thing about this community is they're really interested in experimental art and interactive installations and things like that. And I think for that reason, um, they're really, uh, there's a really big uh, support and love of animated visuals to go along with chiptune shows. So this is an example of uh, visuals at a chiptune show. This was at a festival in New York. And um, that's how I'm involved with chiptune music, actually. It's not doing music, but providing the visuals for those shows. And so this is an example of some animated visuals that I did for the show. And um, the musician up here is using a Game Boy to make music. So uh, it's really, really cool stuff. Um, just like the uh, chiptune musicians that use old video game consoles to make music, I use old video game consoles to make art, um, to make animated art. And specifically, I use the NES, which came out here in 1985. Um, this photo was actually taken here at the Highball when I did a show uh, called Data Pop during South by Southwest last year. And you'll see there are four Nintendos up there because we actually had three visual artists. I think that's an Amiga over on the far side. Um, but yeah, the chiptune community is really supportive of including visual art as an integral part of a performance. Um, so I won't get into too many technical details about how I make games for the NES. Um, obviously, hooking them up to a projector is pretty straightforward. It's just like plugging it into an old TV like the one you see here. Um, but the challenging thing is getting your artwork onto a cartridge. Um, and like Brandon said, it involves assembly programming language, and lots of debugging, and also a lot of um, intimate knowledge of how the video game console works, like to pull data, how to read it, how to display it. So um, this is just something that was sort of like a hobby gone insane for me. Um, if you've ever been to a chiptune show, you know that they're incredibly energetic. Um, people are really friendly and really excited. And, um, you know, at a few uh, shows that I did where I was doing visuals, I would often have people come up to me between sets or after sets, and they would ask, hey, can I, can I see your visuals? Can I see how that works? And at, at first I thought, they're not going to enjoy this, <laughs> because it's not, you know, it's not Super Mario Brothers, it's not a game. Um, I use the controller on the NES to manipulate the animations, to change colors, um, to glitch things out, and things like that. And it's not very intuitive in terms of gameplay. Um, but I found that people actually really enjoyed manipulating visuals. And there's something really satisfying about glitching something out to the beat of the music. Um, people really connected with it. And so I started thinking about how I could take that entire chiptune experience and sort of bring it all together into one package that someone who had never been to a chiptune show could enjoy. And so I was thinking about making your own music, making your own visuals, glitching things out, but also dancing and interacting with other people and having fun and cooperating. And so I started thinking about this more, and um, I made a small demo called Track and Feel, which was a glitch program for the NES that was controlled with a power pad dance mat, which is what you see on the floor in the center there. And um, for about a year, I brainstormed how to make this demo better. And the result is Track and Field 2, which is what we are showing on the Center TV today. And this is sort of like the world premiere of the game. And pretty much no one has played it before, so you guys are totally the first. And uh, I hope you guys really enjoy it. It's going to be um, at a gallery in Canada in June. And after that's done, I'm going to release the ROM for free download. So anyone that wants to play it at home on an emulator can do that for free. Um, and I'll also provide instructions for making your own NES cartridge if you have some electrical engineering background or want to have some <laughs> electrical engineering background. It does require soldering iron, so please be careful. Um, but yeah, and I, 
I really encourage you to try this out. Um, it's not a traditional game in the sense that there aren't points or goals or bad guys or anything like that. It's more of an experiential or um, contemplative experience. Um, the good thing is there's no way to die. And <laughs> if you don't like what you've done, you can always hit select. And that'll clear everything out and you can start over from scratch. Um, it is multiplayer, so I'd encourage you to, um, to play in groups of two or three or four. Um, come up with friends, and if you came here alone, please meet someone because uh, one of the things I like best about doing art is making friends and helping other people make friends. So I encourage you to come up and, and don't be shy. Try it out. Um, I, hope, I hope it's fun. I hope you like it. Um, like I said, I will be providing the ROM for a free download. And in the spirit of the chiptune community, I really encourage people to hack the game and mess it up and do really cool, interesting new things with it. Um, it's not just a game, but it's also sort of a skeleton or a starting place for other games. Um, so you can see this is a screenshot here of a hex editor and a debugger, which looks sort of daunting. But um, I do definitely encourage, if you are interested in programming or learning more about the NAS, uh, to hack it. I, I thought about maybe having some sort of like hacking contest where somebody could win a prize for doing a really cool hack. But I don't know what that prize would be. So <laughs> more info to come. Uh, so that's a little bit about me and Track and Field, which is my game. I wanted to talk a little bit about what we have on the other two screens for you today. Um, over here on this screen, we have GlitchNess which is a glitch program for the Nintendo uh, created by another chiptune visual artist who goes by the name of No Carrier, and he's based in New York. Um, this is sort of an, a more toward the spectrum of more artistic, more experiential. Um, it's sort of like a psychedelic swirl of colors that you get to control with the NES controller. And the cool thing about this project is that he's made all the code open source, and you can also change the graphics. So here you can see some triangles on the screen, but you can make those other images if you like, and it's uh, fairly straightforward to modify the graphics. Um, so if you're interested in learning about NES code or you want to see what uh, assembly looks like, uh, all of it's provided, open source, free for download. Over there on the other side of the stage, we have Zooming Secretary, which is one of my very favorite NES games. This came out at the end of last year, and it was made by two Russian guys named Shiru and Pinwiz. And it's an office platformer where you have to get things out of filing cabinets and answer phones and avoid your coworkers and drink coffee. <laughs> and it's super, super fun. And I think uh, you'll really enjoy it, so I hope you play it. Um, I was talking with the guys who worked on this game, and they're really excited that people in Texas are going to be playing their game. Uh, and so if you get any photos of anyone playing it, please tweet them to Wagos Rancheros because uh, I'd love to send them some photos. They really want to see. I said, they said, are there going to be people there? I said, yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely check that out as well. And this project, like uh, No Carriers Project, is also all free for download and completely open source. So if you wanted to um, make the secretary in your own likeness, you could totally do that. And I thought I'd just, um, you know, as Brandon mentioned, I just started uh, Femicom, the Feminine Computer Museum, about a month ago. Um, and so I encourage you to check that out if you're interested in the role of feminine design elements in video games and websites, web rings, um, all sorts of digital media from the 20th century. Um, right now I have not only a, a growing archive of those games, but I'm also trying to include some new content about games that are coming out or maybe interviews with developers and things like that. Um, one of the articles I have up there now actually is an interview with one of the guys that worked on Zoom Secretary. So if you want to learn more about how that, uh, the art in that game was made, you can go to femicom.org and uh, read, the, read the interview there. All right, well that's it for me. Um, thank you guys so much for coming out. This is an amazing turnout, I'm really excited. And thank you to Brandon and Adam and Wiley and everyone who organizes this event. It's really amazing, and if this is your first time, I hope you'll come out again. And uh, without further ado, I think we'll probably get started on the games. Thank you.